So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's interview section. Tonight we're going to be all, uh, or we're going to be interviewing um, professional drummer Mr. George Cowan, um, who makes his living as a drummer, uh, though at the moment on lockdown. So we're going to be talking to him about snare drums, drum chops, gig situations, and um, hopefully he's going to join this video chat at some point. There he is now watching. So is he going to join? There he is. Okay, you ride on cue. Right on cue. It's bringing him on. Bringing him on. Good evening, George. How's it going, man? How are you? Can you hear me okay, first of all? Yeah, I'm... yeah I can hear you. Can you hear me? I, actually, it's a little bit delay, but um, we'll, we'll get there. So, um... Okay, okay. Okay, how's can we? Okay, we'll Hang just on, check our I'll connection, just, uh, everyone. I've gone to the Wi Fi. Hang on, I've gone. To... Going on to the Wi Fi, ladies and gentlemen, the all important Wi Fi. How are we looking now? Better? That is looking a bit better, I think. Yeah, so can you hear okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you okay. So, um, okay, good okay. evening, George. And welcome. So, George, first of all, how have you been doing in this lockdown? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm all right, actually. I'm all right. I found some uh, some extra work in kind of other places. So it's a little bit unexpected, but it's um, it's all you're good, doing, you know? You're doing it's your good. thing. Yeah, you're exactly. doing your thing. So, uh, so George Cowan, as I was saying on the in intro, uh, intro here, he's a professional drummer um, and... Um, Makes his, usually makes his living drumming and playing. So, George, take us back to the beginning, because although I know you, uh, as hell on the drive, hello, yeah. hell. Um, <laughs> that's beastly. So, although I know you, for all the, <laughs> the fans and people watching at home, where did it all start for you, the love of drumming? And tell us a bit about those early experiences. Where did it all start? So, back in, um, back in primary school is when I started to learn to play. Someone came in, they said... We're going to start doing drum lessons. I thought, that sounds cool. I'm in. So that would have been uh, back in oh, early 2000s, I guess. Um, so, yeah, just started playing, learning my single stroke roles, double stroke roles, paradiddles. For anyone that wants to be a drummer, that's you. So, and and who, who was sort of, um, so back in those days, or the early, how, miss you two L, L's waving at us. Um, and um, back in those early days, who were the drummers that you looked up to? Who 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 were you thinking? Oh, that's great! You know, I wanna I wanna rock that. I mean, for me, I've always listened to a lot of Jimi Hendrix. So Mitch Mitchell um, was right up there. Probably Keith Moon as well. Wow. At the time, um, John Bonham. I mean, those those three guys probably from the start were like the um, the kind of backbone of of everything that I was listening to. And then probably later on, I started. Um, getting into guys like Hal Blaine and uh, yes. Clyde and uh, yeah, and getting those influences Clyde, yeah. in as well. Start, but... Yeah, funky drummer. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the funky drummer. God, God bless them all. Actually. The man. Yeah, oh, most absolutely. Of those, yeah, most of those you said are no longer with us, but they are, so the people that inspired you. And did you so did you start playing in bands from sort of twelve, thirteen? We do you remember your first bands? No, I didn't actually. I, I went the opposite route. So I started playing off um, as a kit drummer, um, did all my studies, like all your rudimental studies, all that kind of like um, the mathematical side influence. of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, sort of, um... the kind of um, marching band influence stuff, I guess you'd call it now. Yeah. Um, so I started doing that. And then probably when I was... Uh... I probably didn't play my first gig until I was about 15. Um, I was probably about 15 and then we got called up. Um, I was in a, a covers band. I can't remember the name of it. We just put like four guys at uh, secondary school together. Um, and they said, oh, do you want to play the Port Elliot Festival, which is in... The Port uh, Elliot. Wow, that I sounds... That sounds yeah, it's like this big... It's this like big house. It's like it, down in... I think it's in Devon. I think it's Saltash. Um, oh yeah okay so and, uh, yeah so tash wow 
Yeah, so for us, like, the school took us up there in the minivan. We were like, this is a big deal. Like, we're going to make it. And we <laughs> played, like, Seven Nation Army and some Rage Against the Machine covers. And then, uh, yeah. and then got back in the van and went back down to Cornwall, you know. <laughs> that was so, life back then. But that, that was sort of the early thing. And um, those of you who, who know George's style, and he's a very celebrated drummer, who we... Uh, a lot of us in the music scene in the UK know and love you, George. Have you always Thank liked, you, let's talk about some, we're going to get geeking out here. Have you always liked okay. that big, that big drum sound? Now, just explain a little bit about what excites you as a drummer when you're setting up your kit, the sound you like, because there's a million different ways we're not, you know, that you can do this. So, yeah. um, what, what do, what so, do, what's... so I, I guess for me, if I'm setting up a kit, I'll set it up probably a little bit unconventionally from what a lot of guys a lot of guys now are trying to chase like the very um like the bassy sound um you think of guys like uh uh who's around at the moment like real blood um name some other big bands like nothing but thieves um, yeah muse whoever like that do, do you like taylor They're from all... foo fighters do you like do you admire him? Oh, oh, I, lo ben, I love taylor ben barry's watching ben barry yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean Shout they're all ben. they're all <laughs> They're all chasing this like low down bassy sound, like whereas I'm, I like a kind of like nearly jazz, maybe not quite as extreme as jazz tuning, but like I like tuning the drums up so they kind of sing and it's completely inappropriate when they're by themselves, but you put them with a, a band or you put them with an excellent guitarist in the form of Danny Young. I was about and, to uh, come on to that. Yeah. About, yeah. <laughs> or, and they, you know, they just, um, they just sit in the mix really nicely. Um, so yeah, I guess just tuning everything higher than it should be. Cause is, one of your, one of the great trick. things about uh, George's style is, you know, we're, we're going to talk about Dos Partridge, your, your, your fabulous duo you're in. You really do make a massive sound with your, with your drums and stuff. Is that something you, is that was that something that you engineered, or did that just come about like that because of your love of these different tunings? I'm I'm actually not too sure. Yeah, um, that's no, you got to think, tell the truth. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of a lot of the time, like um, you, I mean, if you think back to like big show drummers like um, Gene Krupa, uh, Buddy yeah, Rich, Buddy Rich, yeah. Um, yeah, probably John Bonham as well. You know, those guys, even though they maybe with John Bonham, he was he wouldn't say that he owned the band, but you kind of think of Zeppelin and it wouldn't be Zeppelin without Bonham. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, absolutely. So they're active. Those guys are actively trying to do something. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if it's just the influences that I listen to. And when I sit behind a kit, that's the way that it comes out. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's I, don't, sort of vibe. I don't know what the recipe is, but... So, so when you're it working, work. when you're working with Danny, we'll talk a little bit about uh, George's band, who have got, I believe, is that right? Am I, am I got that right? Your third album? Yeah. A third yeah, album. So yeah, the third album. Yeah, yeah. So when you're when you're working with Danny, Danny Young, who's in Dos Partridge, with George, fabulous duo, check them out. Um, how do you write drum parts, or do you, how does that happen when you when you're doing your music? Do you write the drum parts, or do you vibe it? Um, we just we just vibe like a hundred percent that band is just a hundred percent vibe like it either goes one way or the other so if danny will come in and go i've got a great riff um let's check it and uh and we'll just lay it down and see how it goes or i'll come in with a drum part and just lay that down and he'll chuck a crazy riff over the top of it because the uh he's just a magician I, he is. I actually don't get it but um and it would just go and it'd either work or it doesn't. And we must have, I mean, we've done two albums so far in an EP. We've got another album lined up. And if we dug out all of our like Dropbox demos, we'd probably have like, I don't know, another two albums. Wow. Of material so, easily. So, 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 I mean, guys, if you haven't seen this band, check them out after the lockdown or even during the lockdown on, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, all the places. Yeah, and, all of that. Yeah. yeah, so that's George's George's uh, band. So now we've got to talk a little bit, you know, if you just joined us, hello. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hello. Uh, George Cowan, um, this is uh, one of the UK's professional touring drummers and session drummers as well. No, no, it's true. Now, uh, a little bird tells me you have a love of one of the key elements of a drum kit, the snare drum. 
Now, tell us where that is. Now, this is another, as I was saying to a man in LA last night, we had an interview last night, you know, passion is fashion. Now, passion is what's going to save the world. 100%. George has a passion for snare drums. Now, where did this start, this this, uh, love for different snare drums? I I think for snare drums probably dates back um, to... When I stay, started, I started taking private drum lessons when I was younger with a guy called John Mitchell. Um, he's on Facebook, so if he's watching, John, I love you. Um, and he yeah. is just one of the most fantastic drummers that I've ever heard play on a kit. He's absolutely sublime. Um, and he taught me a lot about rudiments and rudimental studies. And, and again, what would probably be the kind of like, it's like the scales of playing on a kit. Yes, yes. Um, and a lot of them you can just learn it's a lot of rhythmic parts so you just you can practice them on just a snare drum and uh and i guess from there that's probably where it kind of for me i was like this is this is the one drum that the one bit of the drum kit that you live with yeah Yeah. um and then so yeah it all kind of spiraled off from there so uh, at first like when you buy a kit like like a a mid-range sort of kit you'll get a snare drum with it and they're usually pretty good and then i was on holiday in wales uh, back in oh, i don't know i'm gonna have to get my mum to confirm this one for me <laughs> probably back in like 2000 and uh 2011 maybe and um and i saw this drum come up on uh on ebay or the internet and i just thought wicked it was like it's like a black it's black with like um gold hoops i just thought yeah that's the one like that's my first pro pro level drum so i bought it and i've still got it that's great and it's amazing um i haven't got it i haven't got it with me tonight i've got three here to like well that obviously that's pretty much the same it's uh it's we (laughs) you know if there's any drummers watching obviously this is a, a real thing so with drums and stuff, and it's like certainly with guitars and, and, and basses and stuff, as the wood ages, that does have a, a difference yeah. on affects the drums as well. So do, would you say that's a, a yeah, key factor? Yeah, it does. So, so a lot of, um, a lot of uh, with drums, a lot of them relates to the density of the wood. Um, so in the past, like, drums obviously warm up and cool down depending on the venue you're in so they used to install like light bulbs like inside of the drum yeah um to like heat them up so that they would stay at when when they were playing they'd stay at like one tension um so i guess it'd be like if you have a have a cold amp and a hot and a hot amp like when your valves are hot like you're gonna get that real kind of like nice gainy sound from it it's gonna it's gonna be cooking um, it's probably the same thing with snare drums. I, I don't know how much science there is in it, but it's yeah. kind of, it sounds different. To it's, me. it's a lovely thing. So, have you got a few of your snare drums there? You can show us on this interview. Then, you got a, a few. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've got. A so couple we're gonna. Of, um, uh, so, so let's say, guys, here. that we're gonna, George is going to treat us now. He's a he's fairly impressive snare drum collection. Um, uh, so what have I'm you gonna, got? I've, only, I've got a few. Them. I've got a couple of them. So uh, the first one. Of course. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, which one it is okay here we go yes this is the uh this is the 15 by six and a half um wfl um snare drum so this one this one's a bit of a strange one it's in like a nice white marine polish. lovely um it's a bit of a strange one um it's from the 40s Ooh. um yeah, this is this is this is one of my favorites. Oh, I really so, like that one. Yeah, it's from the forties. <laughs> uh, this one I bought off um, a guy called Joe Cox. So Joe, if you're watching, I could, so I've just bought another one from him, which I'll discuss later. Um, you're an absolute legend, mate. So this this one's fully restored. Um, it sounds incredible. It looks immaculate. It looks brand. It showroom finish. It's what 80 years old it is yeah it's nearly 80 years old and when you're hitting that drum 
because I find this with instruments that I play and stuff, do you feel that kind of magic and spirit of all that time come back through you a little bit? Is that, do you feel like uh, that? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you know, people on the feed might not know, but I know you know. Um, yeah. I, I love my vintage drums. Um, I love the way they sound. I love the way they kind of feel and um, kind of the way they make you play. It's probably the same with guitars. Like, you must have guitars from yeah, the, yeah. the 60s. They do, and you they, just they pick do. Them up and want to they, play like a. A certain vibe. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Um, 100%. So that's that one um, from the 40s. This one's what else like. Have you got there in, in your. Um... New collection. If you're just what joining us, we have been George um, Cowan. So, so I've got a um, I've got a little uh, well, I say a little Slingerland. I've got my um, this is this is probably my prize, like my prized possession of everything I own. Um, so what's this uh, one? Nineteen. This is a nineteen fifties um, Slingerland Radio King. I don't know if you can Ooh. see it properly. I, I no, can't I, see the phone, but, uh, I can, I can, I can, we can see it. It's a little bit fuzzy here and there, but we can see it. Okay. We can see the beauty of that. Yes. Yes. This is a, um, that's an absolute beauty. Look at the badge on that people. Yeah. This is, uh, this is what it's about. If I can get in there. There we go. That's it. This is, oh, I've got to say people, seven, I've heard this um, one. I've heard this one in person. It's beautiful. <laughs> it sounds, Oh, it's incredible. So this one, uh, I mean, I love this one because um, I was after a, a Radio King for years and years. Um, and if you're into drums, you know that they're uh, pretty fiendishly expensive. Um, and I was very fortunate a couple of years ago to go out to the States. And uh, when I was out there, I managed to, I dropped by Portland, a um, place called Revival Drum Shop. If those guys are watching... Your legends yeah, um, drum shot, yeah. and uh picked up this snare from them and just like they have the most uh m most amazing um array of vintage snares that i've seen in one place it's like a i don't know and like you knew that was the one it was it something. was calling you when you when you saw that snare it got called you out and um, yeah you know, yeah it, it, don't it, get me wrong they yeah. had they had more expensive snare drums um like far more expensive ones and at the time because of the exchange rate it was kind of like a take your pick of the lot and bring it back and it'll all work out somehow you know yeah um, but this one i just played it i thought wow oh, this is it's in, it's superb it's been on i think most of the recordings i've done in the past um two or three years it's it's just a superb snare it's, it's so good Oh wow! And, and what's the what's the um, third one you've got there? Then another one. Um, uh, and the third one I've got. Hang on. This is a uh, another special one. It's another vintage one as well. This is a nineteen. Oh, I'm gonna have to try and get this right. This where's the badge gone? <laughs> this is a bit of a rare beast as well. Um, can't actually find where the badge is on this one, but uh, there you go. Uh, this ah oh, here we go. So this is a nineteen sixties Ludwig Acrylite. Ooh. Uh, really dry snare. They're on a lot of like um, funk recordings, um, like a lot of James Brown. Um, I want to say a lot of Curtis uh, Mayfield as well, like that kind of era. Yeah, of, you know, but, of funk, you know, where you can just dry. feel it. I almost want to, you know, you can just feel that. Yeah. Snare. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Yep. So these are these are on a lot of those, um, but generally it tends to be um, the sort of like '60s models are the most um, most common. This is actually a uh, '50s. No way! I forgot that. Oh, I've got this completely wrong. This is a '60s drum, sorry, with a '70s badge. So yeah, yeah, it's got like badge, a '70s uh, the, badge. It's got like the. It's a bit hard to see here, but. Um, before they used to use the um, what they called the keystone badges, which looked a lot more um, like the one on the big drum here. Yeah. So um, WFL went over to become uh, Ludwig, I think, if my history serves me correct. Um, and then during this, this drum's actually from the transition. So it's it's a, a drum from a, an earlier era where they just started making new badges and thought we'll just put the new badges on the old yeah. drums. Wow! Wow! So, it's, yeah. It's, um, so, so it's again, a... this, this this one came off um, 
Joe Cox again. Um, so he managed to pick it up out in the States. He said, I've got a real gem for you here because I told him I was after one of these earlier Acrolytes. Um, he said, yeah, you won't probably won't see another one like it. So, I, yeah, I just took so it. So it's, it's, it's in the George so Cowan collection. So, yeah, so it does... Um, <laughs> it's now, it's, yeah. So the passion sort of drives you on. So, obviously, we're in this uh, crazy situation with the lockdown at the moment. As a drummer, you, you're a relatively young man still. Um, you know, you've got lots of years of drumming. What are you... What are your things you'd like fingers to do? Fingers crossed. <laughs> no, no, fingers crossed. Uh, what, what sort of things would you oh. like to do? Like even recording, just vibe-wise, drumming ambitions. What are your drumming ambitions? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's definitely, um, I think within the sort of next, uh, how old am I? So I'm 25 now. Yeah, within the next like five years of my life, I think I'd like to have that ticked off by the time I'm 30 is do a proper tour of Europe. Yeah. Um, I would like to. I would like to go to the states and, and play. play out there. Wow. Yeah, that'd um, be good. And play. Um, I feel as though those are like quite quite up there for me. Um, in terms of the UK. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's the dream of any any musician, you know, is to go and do like a a little UK date of. Uh, I don't know, legendary venues like uh, Esquires, Barrylands, um, what, Camden? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, take your pick of Camden's venues, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, um, Just play, play all the classic Concord places. Concord 2 in Brighton. Oh, great venue. Yeah, 100%, you know. I'd, Concord 2. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd love to go and, I'd love to go and do, um, like I've done smaller tours around those kind of venues in the past. I'd love to just go and do one with Padres. Like that would be the dream. I well, think. let's let's fingers crossed with this third album, um, and you know the momentum will build because you are yeah. great. And um, George, can I just say you are a lovely, lovely um, guy, and so thank you so much for taking <laughs> part. And um, is it so? Is there anywhere that um, if anyone's got any questions for you, do you have a drumming page or anything like that? Or um, I don't have a website, um, but obviously I'm on Facebook um, as George Cowan. I'm on Instagram as Jorge Kawano. Um, I'm always always posting on Matt's page. He's always posting on mine, so you can find us through those. You can find us, but um, yeah, no, it's 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 a great. Uh, thank you for you know. T- it's been nice. Although me and George know each other and, and have worked together and do work together, it's nice to take the time out and do an interview with you where we're you know, asking questions and, and find out a bit oh, about 100%, you. Yeah. Ooh, someone, thought... someone will have to interview you. Yeah, so thank you so much. For... I bet you've got a whole. I'm sure. I'm sure why they have. <laughs> yeah. They will at some got, point, I guess. I you've think got a whole, Green, a whole lifetime worth of stories. So. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, it's, it's thank you for taking part in this and George stay safe. Good luck with everything. And we will speak real soon. And, Anything you want to say in closing to you anybody too, watching? Any last? Uh... I, I mean, just if anyone, uh, like a couple of people have said to me during this lockdown um, that they want to go and do something new. If anyone does want to learn how to play the drums, like it's completely possible during this um, with or without uh, drums um, at, at, at all. Um, so yeah, if you do fancy it, just give me a shout and I can, I'm always up for giving. And yeah. Keep it, keep, keep it rocking and rolling. Keep, keep that snare collection going. George. Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much. I'm sure I will. You will do. We'll see you very soon. Thank you ever so much. See you soon. Love you, mate. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.